as an okay. ambassador of bhartiyata of the indian civilization in and and presumably you're trying to create these dharmic pockets in the west where you know where our where dharma survives where dharma propagates what has been your experience of encountering other cultures and are there commonalities or or do you see uh, this bhartiyata as a very distinct sort of uh, culture uh, or a civilizational force what are your That's thoughts a, about a this? wonderful wonderful question but um before i start i'd like to just issue a complaint to the organizers i think if we'd organized this stage in a slightly different fashion then i could have hidden among so much power and beauty and wisdom <laughs> and perhaps bathed in some of their glow but this looks quite sort of separate doesn't it <laughs> and uh, having listened to them for a, a short while um I'm immensely wise and if I was given a choice I wouldn't want to say anything to follow up with that <laughs> but I am compelled to 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 say a few a few words so um I'll do so um it's a wonderful question Ashish ji we've had uh, indigenous voices speaking from the point of view of having been bathed and steeped and having learned what dharma was about without words but by living it since they were probably born if not before but i haven't had that advantage um to the degree that uh, our honored um co-panelists have and and my journey was to throw me so far away from it that gasping i i like a fish gasps for for water and that essence is also an experience which pulls one into an understanding of what dharma is the the perspective that i have is if you live on a mountain then you understand that a mountain is wonderful and it gives you great perspective and you can see a long way and you can appreciate a mountain from that point of view but to really appreciate the majesty of a mountain if you are a long way away and then you look at a mountain you see it with different eyes and you recognize its stature and how it dwarfs everything else and so i've been blessed with that perspective i've been given the opportunity to look from a distance at a perspective which was absent from where i was standing and that has uh, enabled me to to do to to do my journey uh, we we're, we're told that kalyug is a great time to do sadhana and that if you do a year's worth of sadhana it's equivalent to 100 years worth of sadhana in satyug and i would say that if you do a year's worth of sadhana in the west it multiplies it by 10 fold <laughs> even more and so you get a, a greater benefit So somewhere I must have done some great karma to to have been thrown so far away into a vidya adharma and asatya <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I needed it but um the essence of dharma is something which for me it it manifests in 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 the following manner if it was it for it to be dharmic it has to be universal for it to be a fundamental law of creation which is what dharma is it's an appreciation of how all things interact it has to apply everywhere and to every single form and so the the dharma of i was walking um earlier this morning and i saw uh, a flower almost exploding into fire it was so brightly colored i felt that if i place a matchstick nearby it would just explode it had so much life um a message that it wanted to share by virtue of what it was and our understanding and uh, an experience is that every single form has the same desire to manifest its message and so we walk through our journey of life without wanting to harm or diminish the message that each and every form is created to bring into existence and to express and that's universal that's the same everywhere the advantage that we have over here is that many many millennia ago human beings were able to see that that's the reality of this existence the disadvantage of nations and civilizations which don't have that is they may have been able to experience it and glimpse it but they weren't able to contextualize it and understand it and accept it nor indeed to write it um we've had mention of south america and other uh, areas and the effect on their indigenous civilizations and we can see that their first encounter with europeans is something that most of them are still struggling to to stand up from but one thing that's noticeable is that if you look at the native americans if you look at the aboriginals if you look at the south american civilizations by and large they have lost 
their connection with their ancestral roots. And there's a great deal of disturbance there. And it's, to my mind, it's because they knew the outer form of their dharmic history, but they never knew the inner form and they have lost that inner connection. Here we're blessed and time and time again, I, we call um, Bharat Devhumi, time and time again it's nourished by some sort of a, a wisdom and an energy which resurrects the understanding that all of life fits together and is designed to live in harmony. And those natural rules, we follow them sometimes without even knowing that that's what we're doing. And if you if you're like a small cog in an engine and you're performing your role and it's consistent with every other part of the engine, then everything moves forward. But one small cog which is slightly out of alignment or thinks of itself in some other way, that can disrupt the whole of the machinery. But we have time and time again the benefits of sages and people who have steeped themselves in Shastra. They remind us of who we are and how we fit into the whole. The Dharmic perspective is a uh, it's a multi-dimensional, completely integrated, ebullient ecosystem. And we know that we're a small part of that ecosystem. The, um, the, the, the other thing I realized in my traipsing around the world uh, outside of uh, Bharat was that attention. We have a civilizational shift in emphasis of attention. Um, resorting to a contemporary scripture uh, most of the youngsters will have probably come across this. Uh, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. There is a part in there where he talks to a young student and he says, if you concentrate on the finger pointing to the moon, you will miss all of that heavenly glory. In our tradition, we recognized that the being at the center of our own universe is an incredibly um, glorious being. And so our attention, as we navigate it on, what is this thing that's working its way through, through existence? The European and Western civilizations, as they're called, um, their attention is not on themselves. They don't do things to improve and refine this creature, th this creation that they are. They tend to do things to change the outside world so that it fits in better with where they currently are. And that is a, a huge imbalance there. Um, the, the last thing I, I, I wanted to share was that we have the, uh, the essence of, of dharma is something that's quite difficult to communicate in the English language. There are severe limitations in using a language which was created by people whose inner driver was conquest and domination. And so the English language is ideally suited for com competition, for um, debate, for argument, for conquest. And to try and understand and articulate the essences which are collaborative, which are built on coexistence, in a language which doesn't really have those concepts embedded in it yet, is, is, is a very difficult ask. And so I, in most, pa most spaces and places where I speak, I always encourage people not to use the terminology of the Western Indologists and the Western um, religionists, etc., but always to use Dharmic Hindi Sanskrit words for Dharmic Hindi Sanskrit concepts. And let's have the opportunity, let's give the opportunity to the other civilizations to expand their vocabulary set so that when they talk about dharna or dhyan, they don't talk about mindfulness and meditation. We have very clear understandings of what those words mean and what they enshrine as an experience. And each time we lose that, we allow it to become diminished. Something which is this big is dramatically diminished to fit into a much smaller concept. And for us to be able to share this whole wealth, this treasure house that we are the recipients of, we need to encourage the students to understand that they are students and that adhikar is important. A fundamental of dharmic giving and receiving is the establishment of adhikar. And I think a problem that we've had in the past is that we renounced adhikar in a, a spirit of unrestrained generosity and magnanimity. And it hasn't really served us. Adhikar is a wise principle that we should always adhere to and aspire to, so that when somebody wants to receive something from our civilization, from our knowledges of body, uh, our bodies of knowledge, then we need to assess whether in giving them that, what's the responsibility that we're shouldering. If you teach somebody 
the science of Sankhya and then he progresses to create an atomic bomb and then realizes, oh dear, that's our responsibility. If you give an unprepared society the knowledge of mathematics without restraint and without control, then you get a society which creates unbelievable creations, many of which are detrimental even to their creators. So a fundamental part of a dharmic balance is the notion of adhikar. Uh, the last thing I would say is that we are guided by an understanding that there is something called satya. And satya is often translated into truth, but truth doesn't capture the value of what satya is. I think the word reality in the English language is a closer approximation to what satya is. So we are always searching for satya in each and everything that we encounter. This is our sadhana, this is our journey. And so we don't have the situation. Yeah. In America, only last month, they had a flat earth conference. So a whole group of people who believe that the earth is flat, they all gathered together to share their ideas. And this is a purely scientific approach which says what I can see, what I can measure, is the only form of reality that I'm going to acknowledge. I thought that was medieval. G? I thought that was in medieval ages. Some no, haven't no, no. given up the yeah. idea. Well, Florida is quite interesting in, in terms of its civilizational age. <laughs> but um, that was only a few, few months ago. And so, again, they have abandoned the manner in which we scrutinize things. And we combine not just observation, but we can combine scientific analysis. We have disciplines for interrogating and for understanding. And all of those allow us to glimpse into the depth of something and see the truth of what that thing is. So we have the capacity to look beyond name and form and see essence. And if there is anything which is dharmic, it is the capacity to see essence in each and every creation and each and every idea and each and every experience. And that is something that we have to share.